Let's talk about starting an LLC in Georgia. So if you're interested in this topic, here's a overview that I want you to pay attention to. The whole thing is that when we talk about uh, having a Georgia limited liability company, you need to understand that basically uh, you have a state that, that can really help you out real fast. In other words, Georgia has in the last few years has revamped its uh, regulations, its business regulations to make sure that people are forming uh, an LLC, an LLP, an S corporation, a C corporation a lot faster in the state. So this is kind of cool. So you basically have uh, a world of opportunities when you form an LLC in Georgia. One thing I want to say here is that basically you are able to uh, do it yourself. You can actually get your LLC formed within uh, within 24, 4, 24 hours to uh, seven days. So the process can be uh, either slow or fast, depending upon uh, the backlog of, uh, of uh, applications that they have. Or you can actually just outsource the, uh, the application or let's just say the paperwork filing to a third party. So you have an LLC formation service in Georgia that will take care of everything for you. So you always have the, uh, the option here. Don't do it alone if you have no idea what you what, what what you're working on and it's not really that complicated though i mean it's a pretty i will explain to you today uh, how to really do things real fast so you know exactly what's really happening with you now one thing i want to say is that when we talk about lcs in georgia you have uh, all kinds of lcs but uh, most primarily you have two types of lcs you have single member lcs then you have multi-member lcs okay so a multi-member lc is kind of cool if you are envisioning a joint venture with uh, colleagues or friends and this is kind of cool because uh, this type of uh, LC brings actually uh, multiple stakeholders under one roof allowing shared responsibilities and basically also a clear division of the company's profits or losses so when you think about it it's basically a, a, co a collaboration that that's really made seamless okay and one thing I want to say here is that you need to understand now if you want to have a single member LC in Georgia that's totally fine I mean if you're by yourself, if you're a solopreneur, if you are, if you just want to do things yourself, that's kind of cool because basically you have the benefits of limited liability uh, protection, if you will, okay, paired with straightforward taxation. And this is kind of cool because you do not want to actually uh, like sort of, just, I, I would say sort of uh, share the profits with anybody else. Boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. So let me give you the steps you need to follow if you want to form an LLC in Georgia. So the first step here is that you need to name your Georgia LLC. So basically when we talk about LLCs in Georgia, there are some name requirements that you need to really pay attention to. So basically the Secretary of State of Georgia will make the determination as to uh, the, the, the fact that your name is distinguishable because your name has to be distinct from other names. So this is why the first thing you want to do is you want to search for available names. Uh, you go to the website and search for the names that are available so that you do not want to infringe on somebody else's uh, copyright. Okay. So the thing here, the thing is that make, just make sure that you are, you, you have uh, the designators. So you have uh, like LC, L dot LC dot C. You have uh, like, you can have plural. So plural forms of the same word can be, can be, or cannot be allowed when it comes to naming your LLC, everything depends upon the, the entire name of the LLC, okay? But make sure that you are, just make it, make it as simple as possible. And it has to tie with the brand, with your brand, or with the sector you're in, or the activity you want to engage in, okay? And now there are some restricted LLC names. For example, insurance words, banking words, education words. So when, when I'm talking about insurance words, basically you do not want to have, uh, you cannot have, Names, I mean names, you cannot have words such as insurance, assurance, surety, fidelity, reinsurance, reassurance, or indemnity. You cannot have those those names or those words rather in your LLC, in your Georgia LLC name. And also banking words. So things like bank, you know, bank, banker, banking company, banking house, trust, credit union, bankruptcy, or trust company. And you also cannot have education words such as college or university. Those requires written approval of the Georgia non-public post-secondary education commission. So this is kind of important. And uh, so your LC, your Georgia LC filing can be rejected because of the name, the name you choose. So just make sure that you are really, uh, you're really clear on that, uh, on that front. And one thing I also need to say here is that you need to think about like uh, getting a domain name. 
sort of ties to your your name trademarking your georgia alc's name and even in some cases filing for a dba name also i want to quickly remind you of today's topic we are having a conversation about how to launch an alc in georgia The second step you want to follow here is to appoint a registered agent in Georgia. See, the whole thing is that uh, if you are going to have a, an LLC in Georgia, you are going to be served from time to time some paperwork, right? It can be legal paperwork. It can be tax-related uh, paperwork. It can be uh, government paperwork. So you want to have uh, someone to actually do to actually take care of things for you. So when we talk about a registered agent in Georgia, this is basically the person or business designated by your LLC to receive any official documents communication or service of process okay and uh, so the the registered agent is viewed by the state as the official mailbox for your LLC they need to be available at their given address during business hours without exception so that they can accept legal notices in person in person okay and so basically when we talk about a Georgia registered agent this person can be an individual I mean this uh, function if you will this function can be fulfilled by an, an individual or another company so basically, basically when, we, when we talk about an individual, this person has to be over the age of 18 and have a street address in Georgia. The person must also be located at that address. And uh, a, a Georgia registered agent can also be another company. So basically, there are registered agent service companies that can serve as your registered agent. They can serve as yours as long as the company is a domestic corporation, another domestic LLC or a foreign corporation or LLC that has a certificate of authority to transact business in the state of Georgia. So this is kind of, this is, uh, this is that, those are the basic rules, okay? And uh, so in Georgia, a, P, a post office box or mail drop cannot be used as your registered agent's address because due to the nature of a registered agent's role, it's, it's one of those things where they have to see someone, they have to see someone there, okay? And uh, one thing I want to say also is that just make sure that you have that person because uh, if, uh, you don't have a registered agent you can actually uh, be fined or or your uh, your alc license could be revoked in the state of georgia so georgia georgia authorities are really uh adamant at making sure that people go by the rules so it's one of those things where if you can't do it yourself please make sure that you pay you pay a company like maybe a 100 bucks a year or 75 bucks a year they'll, they'll take care of that they have those things for you Step number three, you need to uh, file your Georgia Articles of Organization, okay? And uh, we talk about uh, filing your Articles of Organization. You are going to uh, basically uh, let Georgia know, the state of Georgia know, what's really happening with your LLC. In other words, you want to include things like your the name of your LLC or a valid name reservation number if you already have uh, reserved it, your, your name and address, a valid email address, mailing address of the principal uh, office location, the name and address of your registered agent, the name and address of each organizer in case you have a multi-member um, LLC, for instance, you need to have uh, you need to include in some cases any provisions you may need to add to your articles of organization. Again, here, this is optional, but, you know, the, the, it, it happens. And basically, you got to put the credit card you will pay to register your Georgia LLC. OK, and uh, so to register your, your Georgia LLC with one thing I want to say here is that um, the initial filing fee is actually a. Uh, it really starts at about $100, and you can pay it online via Visa, MasterCard, Amex, or Discover Card. Now, $100, this is actually the price as of the date of this show. Maybe by the time you're watching this, the price might go up to $150 or $100, whatever. I mean, you know, cost of living, uh, what we call COLA, cost of living adjustments. And one thing I want to say here is that if you want to change uh, your uh, Georgia ALC, this is totally fine, not a problem. You, you, you don't need to file your articles of uh, organization again. So to make most uh, all the changes to your articles of organization, you need to file Georgia Articles of Amendment along with a fee. And if you need to file an amendment, basically you you, you can either you can either do it do it yourself, or you can actually uh, go through uh, an LLC formation service and talk to uh, their amendment filing service. Okay, and they can handle it. They can handle things for you as well. And basically, when you actually file your uh, articles of organization online. You, the, this is uh, it could take probably a two to three days. In some cases, it can go all the way to ten days to, uh, to for the whole thing to be processed. You always have uh, 
same day processing for expedited filings. Now you might have to pay a little bit of extra. That's totally fine, but, but it's just a lot faster. And one thing I need to say is that once your articles of organization are approved and you're, and you have, uh, you know, really, uh, congratulated yourself, don't forget to mark your count, your calendar to submit your annual registration. This is also known as an annual report in other states. Well, so I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about uh, how to form an LLC in Georgia. Next thing you want to do is to create an operating an operating agreement, and uh, th those are one of those things are kind of important because you're trying to clarify uh, how you're going to operate for for. All, all uh, I, I would say observers, right? Regulators, stakeholders, investors, and, and so on and so forth. In some cases, some banks want to rate also the operating agreement of your LLC, especially in Georgia. Banks are really sort of a thorough, thorough there. So basically, operating agreement for LLCs are not required in Georgia, right? Now, having one is always a great idea. And uh, so an operating agreement will cover important things like the rules that your company will follow, how finances will be handled, the business structure and how decisions will be made. Now, let me say this. Basically, you have on, on the net, on the internet, you have all kinds of templates when it comes to uh, operating agreements. So you can, you know, feel free to download those, uh, the, one of those templates and uh, sort of uh, you can customize, you can customize your, your, your the, the file you downloaded to, uh, to suit your needs. Now, if you're having a quote unquote, a complex ALC, or you have a, lo a larger number of uh, members, it's just a lot better to pay a, a lawyer. I mean, don't try to be uh, like, don't, don't, don't be greedy here. If it's important, if it, if you have a high stakes sort of uh, a high stakes sort of uh, LLC, then just hire, just hire a, uh, an attorney. Okay. Now, so in the LLC uh, operating agreement, you want to have LLC details, profit distribution, dissolution, member, re member responsibilities. Okay. And uh, so when we talk about member responsibilities, you want to clearly spell out who is responsible for the day-to-day -day, uh, business operations. And in terms of uh, dissolution, you know, how will things happen? And one thing I need to say here is that all members uh, need to sign the agreement, okay? So if you're creating an LLC with other members in Georgia, all parties involved should sign it. This formalizes their agreement to the terms and conditions. Some LLCs in Georgia even have their operating agreements notarized, okay? It's not really uh, needed, but you can do it if you want to add an extra layer of, uh, you know, official, uh, let's just say officialization, if that's even a word, to the whole uh, operating agreement. And uh, so having uh, an, uh, an agreement is kind of cool because it houses the rules of your LLC, okay? You'll have written agreements on how disputes will be handled. It outlines the structure of your company it provides also additional asset protection because by clarifying which assets are part of the business and personal, you add another layer of protection between legal and uh, legal issues. You know, and, uh, yeah, because stuff happens, you never know. The next thing you want to do here is to apply for an EIN. So basically, we're talking about uh, registering with, uh, with, the, with the federal government. So you get your employer identification number. And Georgia is kind of cool uh, that they're fine because uh, they're going to use the EIN that the IRS gave you. You're going to use it also for, for Georgia. Okay. And one thing I want to say here is that you need to understand you are you, you need to register your business with the Georgia Department of Revenue. You, you got to have that. And uh, so the EIN, think of the EIN as your... Uh, as your as your company's your LLC's uh, social, if you will, it's actually a nine-digit number, and this is assigned to LLC's from the IRS, and it, it really uh, it, this is kind of cool. So you will need an, an EIN to open a bank account for your Georgia LLC. You might you might need it to actually get business credit. So if you want to apply for a business loan, you want to apply for a business uh, line of credit. If you want to apply for business credit in general, let's say you want to have a net thirty uh, vendor account, sometimes. Those companies, your your stakeholders, might ask you to, to provide your EIA. And the, the same applies if you want to register, if you want to have a DUNS number. Let's say you want to have an account with uh, Dun & Bradstreet, sort of kick off your business credit uh, opportunities, then uh, you, you will need to actually have uh, an EIN. And so what I want to say here is that when, once you have your EIN, it doesn't mean that you, you're paying taxes, uh, that the company is not paying taxes. 
the, the LLC is not paying taxes. So we have with LLCs, we have double tax. We have uh, we don't have double taxation as we have with C corporations. So you actually uh, only pay taxes once. You pay taxes federally. So in other words, when you file your information return form 1065 at the end of the year with the IRS, you basically just uh, include a, 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 what we call informational return. Basically, what the company did, how much it made, how much money it made, and you have to attach all the schedules K1. And uh, all the members, the LLC members, have to pay taxes at the at the personal level when they file their uh, their Schedule C. So this is uh, this is uh, really important. And also, but now the consideration might might change at the Georgia state level. So you might need to uh, pay something at the state level, and uh, in addition to uh, the individual level. So when you file your, uh, you might have to file your Georgia uh, business taxes, but also your personal taxes. So again, it's one of those things where rules change all the time so just uh, go to the georgia department of revenue to get more information so let me give you a bonus here so once you actually establish your lc uh, in georgia basically you might need to do other stuff right so you need to of course i mean i've said this before you need to have a, a business bank account so you you and you need to have a, a bank account for your business because that's how you are going to separate your personal assets from your business assets. And you, you gotta have that. And you gotta also think about the managing your money. So this is important. You also need to think about securing relevant licensing and permits. So depending on your business's nature, you might require specific state or local licenses to operate legally. And for instance, if you are opening, uh, let's say, a restaurant in, in a in an ATL. You will need health permits and a liquor license if you plan to serve alcohol. So be sure to check Georgia's official state website or consult with a local business advisor to ensure you have all the necessary permits at hand and you need to have that. And you also need to register your Georgia state sales tax so that, you know, basically you are able to, uh, you are able to, uh, like it's called a seller permit, okay? You might also want to think about investing in business insurance depending upon uh, the kind of business you're in because uh, all businesses are not the same. So it really depends upon uh, your, uh, your your sector. And also think about trademarking your brand assets. So your brand identity is integral. So once you have designed a logo or a slogan that represents your, uh, you know, your LC, consider trademarking it in order to protect it from unauthorized use. This is kind of cool. And uh, so this is really important. Now, one thing I want to say here is that, you know, let me give you a few pro tips before we close to this conversation. So when we talk about uh, a Georgia LLC, there are there are some uh, benefits. You have uh, personal asset protection. You have tax flexibility. You have credibility. You have simplified management. This is kind of cool because uh, LLCs compared to uh, corporations have fewer formalities and, and uh, administrative requirements. There is no need for board meetings, annual reports, or rigid management structures. You also have, uh, when it comes to LLC, either in Georgia or elsewhere, you have a cost effective establishment process. So this is kind of cool. Like basically it's kind of cheap to establish a Georgia LLC. And uh, so again, the state fees for forming the Georgia LLC range from $100 to $145, depending on factors such as your method of filing and whether you choose to reserve your business name and note that fees change over time. So you should check the Georgia Secretary of State website for the most recent fee schedule. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I'll just explain to you real quick how to start an LLC in Georgia. So uh, I the, the, the steps are, first of all, I spoke to you about the types of LLCs uh, in Georgia. So single member LLCs and multi-member LLCs. Then the steps you have, you're able to name your Georgia LLC, appoint a registered agent in Georgia, file your Georgia articles of organization, create an operating agreement, and apply for an EIN. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. Until then, remember, stay Marvelous.